First of all, I hope that all of you and your families and loved ones are in good health and staying safe. This is not how a TEDx talk is supposed to begin, but these are unprecedented times. I also want to acknowledge the massive degree of privilege I have to deliver this talk and think about creative work when there are millions in our nation and around the world who are fighting to survive. I'm sure you'll join me in thanking those in healthcare and all essential workers for the courageous efforts they are performing on behalf of all of us. Thank you. This phrase, or something similar, is often said, but is it true? I believe we're seeing an explosion of creative work during this highly constrained time. It's largely enabled by technology, not the bleeding edge AI, AR, VR, drone powered future that's been hyped, but the more common audio recording, video editing, sharing, conferencing systems that most of you have at home and even in your pocket. It's a creativity that's powered by STEAM, the practical integration of arts and technology. Within our constrained world, this approach to producing new work some way, somehow, is being revealed as a powerful way to learn, create, and yes, innovate. By necessity, some of the first to produce from home were late night and comedy shows, The Daily Show, The Tonight Show, SNL, Conan, and others who have thrived in some ways and found laughter and joy in those unplanned moments when the actual reality of daily life intrudes. Of course, new DIY shows like John Krasinski's Some Good News have launched specifically embracing our isolated Zoom immersed circumstances. If anything, it's been a nice reminder that these are real people too, adding a bit of authenticity and quirky charm to broadcast media that may have become too slick and overproduced. Lady Gaga organized other pop music megastars for the One World Together at Home event streaming performances from their own homes to share mostly unvarnished moments of artistry. There were even some distanced group performances, like the Rolling Stones, and it raised some really important questions, like how does Elton John shoot hoops on his patio with this grand piano in the way? But more seriously, it showed how even in isolation, music and the arts bring us together and inspire hope and goodwill. Arts and culture organizations were already facing significant challenges well before this crisis, but many have responded by putting vast amounts of content online, first broadcasting from empty halls and theaters, but now streaming recorded performances and virtual collections from their archives. There's never been more cultural content easily accessible, and I hope everyone has the opportunity to explore genres, forms, and venues that maybe you haven't had access to before. But these are all professionals. It's what they're paid to do. The show must go on, so adapt quickly and figure it out. But what about the rest of us? Like the pros, we started sharing performances from home. Friends hopping onto Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube Live and Periscope to stream and share at-home performances, reminding us that there's an abundance of talent and creativity all around us. Like many, our vacation plans were scrubbed, so prompted by a social meme to post my 10 favorite album covers, I posted short performances from those albums, just for fun. But other families and household members in joint isolation started producing great parodies and mini musical productions. But I really started paying attention when the first collaborative videos in isolation started making the rounds. Composer Eric Whitaker developed this technique more than 10 years ago. His virtual choirs have involved thousands of participants, and now some organizations have started to produce work in that vein. Stage companies, orchestras, ensembles around the world started to produce these collaborative videos. Professional orchestras like the Rotterdam Philharmonic, as well as student groups like this one from Berklee College of Music, choral groups, a cappella groups have all started making ensemble videos, sometimes on an enormous scale, like this ensemble put together by Cunningham Piano outside Philadelphia. I contend this is a different art form. It's different from the process of putting together a live performance. We can't do this on Zoom. Many have tried, all have failed. The technology and the laws of physics, namely the speed of light, prevent real-time collaborative performance and music making. 
It's also very different from going into a recording studio or a video soundstage to capture. But using modern technology and art, people are developing new ways to create. One of the many lives taken by COVID-19 was Donald Kennedy, the eighth president of Stanford University. A renowned scientist, he was also the strongest possible advocate for the arts and humanities and a patron of my former a cappella singing group, the Stanford Fleet Street Singers. In his memory, I put together this video with contributions from 60 Fleet Street alums. I produced this on a five-year-old iMac and nearly all the recordings were done with smartphones. I don't have an audio or video production studio in my house, but in fact, I put this entire talk together with my phone, a tablet, and a desktop computer. So while all this is happening, there's another example of extraordinary creativity in the game world of Minecraft. For those unfamiliar with Minecraft, it is much more than a game. You can build entire worlds with a variety of materials, brick, wood, stone. The low resolution blockiness is intentional, designed for rapid building and flexibility. Construction is performed meticulously, block by block, with little or no automation. Hence, it is really, truly a craft. And yet, college campuses are being recreated in Minecraft in record time. Locally, Students at UPenn started PenCraft, which quickly became the most detailed and extensive build of any campus in the world. They invited Drexel students to join, who have now built a large percentage of our campus in Minecraft. Those familiar with Drexel will recognize some of the iconic structures on our campus, the dragon statue, even the Wawa. Here's the kicker though. These collaborations formed entirely virtually. The students only know each other by username in Minecraft and Discord, a chat platform. It's a highly detailed recreation built and organized entirely online by individuals who don't know each other, not even their real names in the real world. They are developing new ways to collaborate, not just for this current time of isolation, but I'm convinced for the long-term future. Observing this explosion of creative work in new and different forms, I started a blog and a weekly newsletter, Creating at a Distance, to highlight and celebrate some of the extraordinary work being produced. Back to the world of the performing arts, one challenge that remains is how to incorporate any kind of real-time interaction, either between performers or with an audience. Here's where game worlds like Minecraft offer some clues about how we might go about that. Create a simple interaction, a shared language, and let people participate. So I invite you now to be part of such an experiment, an interactive performance. I've created a web app that should work on just about any phone. Here's what it looks like. You can choose from these different modes. 
and I'll offer cues on screen that you can follow to play along with our song. I'm going to perform a song with me and me. Let's practice. A five, six, seven, eight. Okay. A quick word about our song selection. In a TEDx talk, you must have permission from copyright holders to perform a work. That's why I've only been showing you images, not actually showing you examples from some of these performances. Here again, I'm facing some severe constraints. I wanted a song that many people are familiar with. It needs to be pretty easy to play. So it's going to be from popular music, but there are a very small number of popular songs after 1924 that are no longer copyrighted. So here is a little song from 1957. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> I've also made a web app that makes it easier to produce these visual cues using a simple text-based and human-readable format. You'll find it on my website. I welcome all who want to use it and to send feedback. Let me close with this. Don't let these constraints bind you. Let them free you. They provide some limits, freeing you to explore within. Many of us have the tools to create, just not the experience, which you gain by doing it. Make something, build something. As learning scientists will tell you, knowledge is not simply absorbed, we construct knowledge. We build it by making stuff, brick by brick or block by block, if you prefer. That's why I believe in this articulation of STEAM. It's not about learning to be creative, it's learning by creating. Thank you for your attention. I invite you to continue the conversation on Twitter. My handle is just my first name. Thanks.